If you're like me, you've probably researched a lot on how to outline a book. You know there are a lot of choices out there and a lot of opinions on how to do so. In this video, I'm not going to tell you the right way to outline because, spoiler alert, there is no right way. Hey everyone, my name is Michaela, but you can call me Mick, and welcome back to my channel where we dive just a little bit deeper. I'm currently on a journey of rediscovering my writing practice. Now that I have the groundwork for my project House of Stone, it's time to outline. Which, if you're a plotter, this is probably your favorite step. And if you're a pantser, you might be scared of outlining. Or maybe you just get stuck outlining and skip it completely. I fall somewhere in the middle of the spectrum. I make an outline, but it's not solid. And you'll see what I mean when I get into my process in another video. Today, I'm gonna take popular outlining methods that are talked about over and over again on YouTube and in craft books and show how every outline is the same. If you're like me, you love hearing about other people's writing process. And I find it so interesting because as writers, we are partaking in a creative art form where we more or less end up in the same location. And yes, painters, they all paint, they end up with a painting. Writers, we all write, we end up with a book. But even though all of our books are vastly different, they all more or less have the exact same story structure. As humans, we are hardwired to listen and process story in the exact same way. And I could take the next 10 minutes to talk all about this topic, but there are a lot other smarter people out there who really know what they're talking about when it comes to this. So check that out if you're interested. When we boil it down, we really have been telling stories since the dawn of communication. We used to tell stories for survival, and we still do that today. Many years ago, we would tell story of warning. You know, we would give metaphors for life's greatest challenges and all the secrets of how to overcome them. Now, in a more globalized world, we still do that. We tell stories to connect us and help us survive daily struggle. Humans respond to story that have a very similar structure. And I'm sure before I even pop it up on screen, you can probably guess exactly what that structure is. It looks a little something like this. A character that we've been made interested in has a goal, which is backed by a clear and understandable motive. But the character has not yet reached this goal and is blocked by obstacles that create risk and or consequence of failure. The character must struggle to meet the goal. Allied characters and resources are encountered which aid in overcoming the obstacle. Once the obstacles are overcome and the goals reached or not, if the story is tragic, a new normal is established which remains in stasis until the next inciting incident occurs. Sound familiar, right? That's because almost every movie, TV show, book, video game, etc., follows this same structure. And we just can't get enough. So why sometimes does it feel so hard to outline a story when we all inherently know the basic story structure that needs to be met? For me, I find outlining difficult the same way I find any creative pursuit difficult. It feels like I need to get it right the first time. Okay, you're a perfectionist. It really helped me as a writer to like get started and move past the outlining process when I decided to mash all the outlines together like we're about to do and I realized they were all the same. And I didn't have to find the perfect outline for my book. And I didn't have to create even the perfect outline for my book. I just needed to choose something that resonated with me, get started, and get writing. Since all outlines are the same, it doesn't matter what we choose. It just matters that we all hit the emotional milestones every reader is looking for when they read a story. Let's look at three different popular outlining methods that I have used and that I've seen talked about time and time again on YouTube and break them down a little bit deeper and show how they're all the same. Let's look at three popular outlining methods that I have seen talked about time and time again, and that I've actually used. Dan Harmon's Story Circle, Save the Cat, and The Seven Point System. 
What is story circle, or you might have heard it called plot embryo? Dan Harmon, a screenwriter, created the story circle that takes eight points to create a typical hero's journey. YouTuber Rachel Steven co-opted this method and explains it on her channel as the plot embryo method. They are both the same way to see and visualize story as a cyclical thing. What is Save the Cat? Save the Cat was made famous by screenwriter Blake Snyder and later adapted to book format by Jessica Brody. This has become in recent years the most famous way to visualize a story by turning the three-act story structure into something more similar of a movie script and creating more beats. There are 15 beats total. What is the seven-point structure? This method was coined by Dan Wells, an author. This is a simplified version of both the story circle and Save the Cat, while visualizing the plot points with multiple rising and falling actions. There are, like its namesake, seven points. In reality, these and all other outlines are the same. Let's take a look. Let's now break these three outlines down onto a basic three-act structure, which is the same as visualizing a beginning, a middle, and an end. Save the Cat starts us off with the opening image. Save the Cat has more steps than most other outlines due to its screenwriting history. Save the Cat has beats for important scenes that you may need to help assist in each act. These are still present in the other outlines, there just aren't specific placeholders for them. The opening image is where you visually show in a single scene who your hero is and what their world or life is like. Or in the story circle, we have the you section, which tells us to set up our main character's comfort zone and show them in that before change state. Jumping off of that, Save the Cat has the setup, which is the same thing. You're supposed to write scenes to show this before scenario and set the baseline our main character has always known. In the seven points, the hook starts us off, which is meant to set up the status quo. See how all of this sounds the same? In the beginning of your book, you want to set up scenes that show your main character's status quo and the before they embark on change and conflict throughout the novel. Next, we have themes stated. This is another added scene that Save the Cat has. This is that moment where usually character dialogue or action will hint at what our main character's arc is going to be. This is definitely a polarizing beat and a reminder that outlines are just guidelines, so you don't have to include this. Once our status quo has been set up, it's time to turn our main character's world upside down with the inciting incident, or the need, catalyst, or plot turn one. Our main character always needs to want something that they currently don't have or a goal to achieve. This will coincide with the inciting incident that will change up our character's status quo. Then we have a debate scene, which shows our character struggling with the questions of should I blink in response to the inciting incident. This is that call to action. They are being called to leave their status quo. Do they take it? Of course they do, or we have no story to tell. Once they do so, they will go or break into two. This is the part where your character makes the conscious and proactive decision of, yes, I am going, and we break from order into chaos, jump into a new world, or a new way of thinking. These points allow us to transition into Act 2. In Act 2, Save the Cat kicks us off right away with the B story. This is where you may introduce a new character such as the love interest, a mentor, or an ally in their goal. Overall, once they cross the threshold of accepting the call to action, they will be encountering fun and games or search for what they are looking to achieve. This portion of the book is filled with obstacles for our characters to overcome or new experiences to explore, whether they are external or internal, leading us up the action line with pinch one that reminds us to up the stakes. You can do so by introducing a villain or continuing obstacles 
all while showing the reader what it will cost your character if they fail this new journey. As the stakes are being raised and obstacles are being met, we arrive at the midpoint, or where your character has found what they desired in the beginning. The midpoint is usually used to show this false victory, where your character achieves what they originally set out to obtain in the beginning. But something usually happens here that raises the stakes once again and pushes the character forward to real change. This is where a lot of plot twists happen, or the real villain is revealed, time clocks can occur, or that moment where your characters finally kiss. In Save the Cat, we have a beat for bad guys close in, or pinch two. After the midpoint, the hero typically has either a new or modified goal to pursue throughout this beat. This is where things may get progressively worse for our main character, as either real bad guys close in or the metaphorical internal ones do. Again, raising the stakes. But don't worry, things get even worse for our main character, because even though they may have gotten what they wanted, they have to pay the price and something feels taken from them. This step marks the absolute low point in the journey of your hero. The heavy price is so hefty that they seriously doubt if carrying on is even worth it. Everything feels hopeless. You may even add in the extra save the cat scene of the Dark Knight of the Soul. This is usually a reaction or internal scene where the character now realizes they are worse off than they were before, and they are pondering, is this even all worth it? As it states in Save the Cat, the return scene, break into three, or plot turn two, is the aha moment. This is where the hero realizes what they must do to not only fix the problems created in Act 2, but more importantly, fix themselves. This is where our main character obtains or figures out how to conquer the big bad that appeared in the midpoint. Then we have change, the finale, or the resolution. All showcasing our main character overcoming this final obstacle with newfound information and showcasing the completion of their character arc. How have they changed? How have the other characters in this journey changed? And how has the world changed around them? We then have the final image that authors often like to mirror the opening image to showcase all the change our main character really went through. The bottom line is that all outlining and story structure methods come to the same conclusion. Every story needs a beginning, a middle, and an end, usually with a character that the readers identify with and watch as they try to achieve a goal. There's a lot of advice out there on the internet, like your novel needs to have conflict on page one or your inciting incident must happen at X percent of your novel. I'm here to tell you that a lot of that fine tuning and getting that perfect story structure down and the perfect pacing all comes with editing and rewriting. It's not going to happen on your first outline or your first draft. In the beginning, if you're just sitting down with your idea, the outline is a plan to get to the end of the novel. I don't love saying roadmap like I hear a lot of other people use for outlines because that implies I have to follow this direction or I'll get lost along the way. Instead, I view outlining as a plan. And if we know life, we know that plans can change just like that. An outline is merely a first draft of my plan to finish my first draft. I will adapt my outline the same way I will adapt my story when writing the first, second, third, maybe even fourth draft. When outlining, it's important to pick what speaks to you, what works for your brain and how you visualize story. My advice, if you don't know, would be to try out a couple different methods. Maybe try discovery writing, try save the cat, try even outlining chapter by chapter. The more you try, the more you'll settle on a method that really works for you. And if you listen to any author interviews, which I highly suggest you do, most authors, when asked about their outlining process, they do not follow one of the methods that we even talked about to a T. They usually have come up with their own method to outline and get that first draft and multiple other drafts done. 
So the more you try, the more you'll settle on probably your own method and really find out what works for you. Then you can go ahead and sell that method for a low cost of a $24.99 digital download. I'm just kidding. Don't do that. Why are we doing that anyways? In the next video, I'm going to break down story structure even more. And don't take me as the expert because I'm not. We're going to turn to every writer's real source of truth, actual books. We'll be looking between the pages of one of my favorite writing experts, Lee Bardugo. After that, I'll take you along on my new outlining process and how this planter feels about going from a planter to a full-on plotter. Thank you so much for watching this video. Keep on writing and I hope to see you next time.